Hello and welcome back to another tasty tutorial in Blender. Yesterday we are taking a look at how to create this exact effect of a sphere traveling through the tube. As always, there's going to be a free resource file available for you to download, so feel free to check it out in the description below. In any case, let's get into the video. So I open up a new Blender file. This is in Blender 3.1 and I'm using a right click scheme from Blender 2.79 for shortcuts. So the way we're going to do this, we're going to use curves. Now, first of all, I'm going to press A twice and then X and delete everything in the scene because we don't need it right now. Then I'm going to go with Shift A and select a curve and I'm going to choose a path. So let's say this guy right here. Pressing Tab, I'm going to go into Edit Mode and I'll move these vertices randomly around. You can do it as well, however you wish. So I'm just going to press G and then move my mouse around. Select another vertex, G left click to set it there, maybe this one G and then move it back like that, something like that. Left click, confirm and then tap to exit out. Now we're going to use this curve to command the object that's going to travel on this path. So we're going to rename this path by double clicking on the NURBS path and rename it to, let's say, travel guide. Press enter to confirm. So this is going to be our travel guide. Now let's add a simple sphere. So I'm just going to go mesh UV sphere. So shift A mesh UV sphere, S to scale it down. So I'm going to drag it to about there. Seems about right. So this is going to be our sphere object. We're going to go under our object constraints here on our right side. And here I'm going to choose follow path. So in this menu, I'm going to go to the eyedropper, click that, and then select the travel guide that we have created. And this is going to position the sphere at the beginning of our path. I'm just going to press the animate path which means that now if I press play, so in my case, it's going to be Alt A space in yours. Yes, the sphere travels all along the way of the path. Now you can see that there's a slight issue here. The sphere just keeps traveling around. Basically, this is because the animated path is set to 100 frames. Now, what does that mean? So from one to 100, that's the animated path duration. If I want to change the duration, I select the path, go under this little line symbol and under path animation, I have the frames here. And if I extend them, you can see that the sphere is going to travel slower. And if I, let's say, put it to 50 frames, the sphere is going to go way faster. So let's just put it to, I don't know, 20 for now, just like something super quick. And here in the end, I'm also going to put 20 so that we just have this continuous loop. We can then just work around these speeds a bit later. For now, we're just going to set up what is going to be our base of the animation. Another thing that I want to try is go under, again, selecting my sphere, go under my ob this object constraint submenu. And then I want to also say, follow the curve. So basically, the sphere is going to rotate alongside of the curve. Okay, this is maybe now a bit too fast, so I'm going to go back to my path animation, set it, let's say, to 150 frames and the end to 150 frames as well. Now, if I play it, you can see more clearly, of course, that the sphere is actually turning around and following the radius. Perfect. Now we want to make our tube object. So how do we do that? Like one way would be now to create a cylinder and then guide it along the path and whatever. But there's an even easier way. So we're going to copy our travel guide, shift D to duplicate, and then just right click to put it again, perfectly centered. We're going to rename it to tube. And now I'm going to click on geometry and under the bevel, I'll choose depth and increase the depth, let's say to 0 0.145. Let's say 0 0.15, like that. Perfect. The tube is not really deforming the way we want to because we need to use a cast modifier. Now, because this is still a path, so if we move it, you can see it's still a path, we need to make it into an object. And we do that by pressing Alt-C and then create that into a mesh or convert into a mesh. So now if we go into tab mode, we can see that it's a mesh. Under our modifiers, I'm going to add a modifier. And here I'll add a cast modifier like that. Now you can see that it's not working like we want it to. It's still not understanding what it has to do. Basically, it's applying 
the modifier to do a sphere based on the geometry or rather the origin point of the object. If we go under the object and then click the eyedropper and select the sphere, well, nothing that much better happens. Let's decrease the factor and let's put the factor to like, I don't know, 0 0.3. Now you can see that it's already behaving like it should, but still it's not just applying to the specific points that we want. And we do that by controlling the radius. So I'm just going to move the radius and let's say I move the radius to 0 0.08, something like that. Now if I press play, you can see that it's basically influencing the tube. Now, you might notice if we hide our sphere, you might notice a weird movement, this like type of traveling vibe of things. If you want to smoothen that out, you can add a subdivision modifier to the tube, but add it before the cast modifier. And now if I move to the beginning of the animation by pressing this backwards button, or I think also shift and left arrow, and I play it again, you can see that the action is way smoother. And if I increase the levels viewport to two, you can see that it's even smoother. And again, now it's mostly a point of like, what do you want to achieve? Do you want to have this more like, nice and concise, like almost elliptical shape? Maybe you want to have like just a straight up sphere traveling along, and you can then also command and control how this cast is applied. This completely depends on you. But this is the super, super, super simple example of how to do it. So let me just lower down this factor like this. The radius, again, the more we increase the radius, the longer this fall off is going to be of the influence of the sphere. So basically, the further ahead and backwards is going to influence the, the size and the factor of the cast modifier. So if we want to have it super close, we just go with 0.52 and we're here. You can do whatever you want. Let's say I'm going to divide my screen by dragging it, go under my assets, browser, materials that I've put. So this is like a selection of materials that I have. I'm going to go into my material overview or what's this uh, viewport shading so I can see what I'm adding. I'm just going to divide the screen again and go into the shader editor up here. Let's just choose something like sci-fi padding. This is a super interesting one. We have this tube structure, modify the rotation to be like 90 degrees. So it's like the lines are following the tube, decrease the scale to one. And now you can see it seems like almost it's traveling through the tube. So this is a very simple and easy way of simulating a spherical object traveling through the tubes. In our next tutorial, we'll take a look at how to apply this exact same effect to a more complex object. So yeah, that's it for the video. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. You'll find a free resource file in the description below. More than welcome to check it out. Uh, don't forget to leave a like, and drop a comment, uh, subscribe to the channel. It helps me out a lot. So yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Bye.